Morning everybody, we're going to be doing a little video explaining how to do the setting out of wood to make a, a wooden frame. The picture of the wood that I'm going to show is this one. It's this one on the wall here. We're going to be making that frame there. Don't worry. We're going to be making that frame. It's 300 by 250 and the wood has been prepared for me. And when we're doing the, when we're doing the marking out, we use clear grade timber, no knots. And we, you, we set it out like this. You've got two pieces at the left, which are styles, and two pieces on the right, which are rails. Okay, so let's have a look at this then. I'm gonna whiz this around the workshop. Okay. So what we've got then is our four pieces of wood that have been very kindly marked out for me. And uh, they're going to be a frame that looks like this. It's going to be mortise and tenons on there and mortise and tenons on there and in fact they'll set inside the frame like that that's what we're going to do so once I've had a good look at the wood I, I always make sure I select the wood that is clear grade in this particular occasion we've got one piece of wood that's got a knot in it and that's okay as long as the knot isn't in a place where we're going to do a joint so we always select the wood either completely without knots or to select wood that doesn't have knots where you're going to have to work okay now they've already been cut to length and they've been sanded a little bit to make them nice and clean the very first thing that you do when you're working with your wood is you put them together into the sets so these two on the left are the styles they're the ones that go vertical and these two on the right are the rails and the way in which we mark them up is that this style is going to have a face mark on there and the rails are going to have a face mark on there and there's another little thing that we do to prevent us from getting muddled up when we're working with wood is we I'm doing it in pen so it's easy to see is we put a little triangle on there and on this one we put another triangle going across the wood what this means is that even if we get all of our wood muddled up and I'm going to muddle it all up now turn it all around and make it all difficult Right, now that means, because of that little picture, that we can always reassemble our wood. So I know that that one goes there, and that one goes next to it, and suddenly the little triangle appears again. And then this one, and that one, well that's not right, so I turn him around and there's the triangle again. And this enables us to prevent wood from being muddled up. You can always keep it on the bench looking like this. Now the way in which we actually, um, oh, by the way I'm using pen on there, you'd normally only ever use pencil because pen tends to bleed through paint and, and, and it'll keep coming through the paint all the time no matter how much you paint it it will always keep coming through the paint you don't want to be seeing those lines so we use pencil instead the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use an ordinary pen for marking and we're going to be using a, a, a um, what's this called this is called a tri square okay so the first thing we do is we take one piece of wood we put it across the two pieces, making sure they're nice and in line. And then we put a mark, just a single mark on that side and a single mark on this side. We know that they're the right length, so that's going to be okay. So there's our single line. And as you see, you always put them back into their sets again. Now what we can do is we can put the square right the way across both pieces at the same time. And that makes them very, very accurate. If we cut all of the tenons, they're going to be tenons there, tenon there, tenon there. If we cut the tenons exactly together like that, then they will be exceptionally accurate. Then we go on to this side too. Now, now from that point on, we only ever put the base of the tri-square on the face side or the face edge. By the way, I need to just uh, make the face sides look right. So this is the face edge. And that's the face edge. And these these uh, these symbols are universal across all woodworkers in all the world. They use these marks in exactly the same way. Okay, so that even if you go to a foreign country and work, you'll still find them using the same marks. Now the next stage is to go all the way around the wood. So I'm going to use this tri-square. It's very important when you're working with um, a tri-square that you're very very accurate because if you're not accurate then you're never going to be able to cut in the straight in the exactly the right place if the if the lines aren't in the right place do you understand what I mean it's got to be as accurate as you're able to do can you see that 
that goes all the way around the wood and it's exactly correct. Let's do the next one. Okay. And it's ever so quick to do, it doesn't take a minute. And it all started with putting them into a pair, didn't it? Start with a pair first. Okay, so that's that first one done. And I always put it back to where it came from. And then this one now. Now you'll notice I've got a finger in the middle of the blade. I've got three fingers on this side. I've got a thumb squeezing it together. I see people using a square like this with a gap. And there's, there's no point in having this piece here if it isn't against the side of the wood. So you put it against the side of the wood, you squeeze with the, with the thumb and fingers, and then you put a finger in the middle to stop it tipping. Stop it doing this. Okay, you push a finger down, and it goes straight down. Okay. And then we go right the way around. I'm going to swap it over because the base must always be on the face side or the face edge. Okay, and then turn him around. Now I'm doing it with ink so that you can see on the video because pencil wouldn't be able to be seen very well. I've got to bring this one all the way around yet. Yeah. Now you'll notice I'm always swapping the, the tri square around to make sure that this, the base goes on either the face side or the face edge. Now you can see that one's gone all the way around, okay? So now I've got to put it back into its place, which is there. That's now back into its place. So I'll put that to one side a minute and we'll do the next lot. Now the next lot are gonna be interesting. Can I have a rule, please? <laughs> yes, there's a rule. Because on this particular design, we come down 50 millimeters from each side. So there's 50 millimeters on that one. And there's 50 millimeters on that one. Then what I can do is I can put my wood across it. This is going to be the rails going across. I'll put a little dot there. And put a little dot on that side. Now I, I don't go straight across. Reason for that is I can't tell if this is straight. Okay, so we put that back to where he came from. Now making sure these two pieces of wood are beautifully together, I now can do the line right the way across both pieces like that okay and this means that they're very very accurate doesn't it I'll just turn him around so that keep the, keep the lines exactly correct and straight across and straight across so then all I've got to do now is to send these lines all the way around and I'll do that now I'll take a moment one there one there, one there, and one there. Now I don't need to go all the way around the back because these are going to be the mortises. That's a mortise there, a mortise, and that's a mortise, and that's a mortise. Obviously the tenons need a line right the way around the back. So now turn him over again and get these lines. I'm going to need a marking gauge in a minute. In fact, a mortise gauge actually. Somebody get me one of those. That would be good. I went to the toilet and there's people like shouting. Oh. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to show you in a minute how the marking gauge works because you can then watch this video many, many, many times to understand um, how it all works. Okay, and you'll notice I'm still on the face side always or the face edge with the marking gauge, with the, uh, with the square. Okay, so now what we got, I can now reassemble this and put it back to where it ought to be by turning things around. Turn that around and put that vertical, and bring that back onto there. Now when I'm on the bench, I always keep them in this shape so that I don't get muddled as to what I'm doing. So if I'm going to work on that piece, I'll take it away, but leave all those where they are, you work on it. Then I'll come back and put it back to where it belongs and then you take the next piece away. So when I'm working, you'll see me having these on the bench in a nice orderly fashion. These are the ones that go up and down, and these are the ones that go side to side. So all the ones that go side to side are rails, and they've got tenons on. And all the ones that go uh, vertical, which are these, have mortises. Okay? So now we're going to introduce you to the marking gauge. Now the marking gauge is made up of um, um, a number of different parts. Okay, and they all begin with the letter S. So that's the, that's the screw. This here is called the spur. These are the things that mark the wood. This long thing is called the stem. 
okay and this part here is called the stock now the stock is the big chunky piece of wood and the stem goes through it on this particular uh, example can I have a chisel please on this particular example we have um, uh, we, we have two spurs so that we can actually mark it up for um, the size of the mortise now I know what I do is I put the chisel exactly between the two spurs exactly between it then I put my thumb on it by putting my thumb on it this stops it from moving now so now what I can do I can pick up my timber I can put the stem and the and the stock exactly in the middle of the wood put a finger on it and then squeeze the screw and as long as that's pretty comfortably in the middle which it is that now is now set up for doing mortises now the secret of doing a mortise is that the face side is the bit that you work from on all of the pieces everything is measured from the face side going downwards on all the pieces that means they're all the same so what I can do now I can put the stock and the stem on the on the uh, the face side okay and I get myself comfortable and when I'm comfortable I press down with my thumb and mark the wood okay straight the way down it's a very very simple operation goes right the way around the corner goes down the other side you can see me doing it just here just get comfortable and when you're ready press down with your thumb go right the way across the ends again get comfortable with it a minute and then you just push down with your thumb so that's that one done put him back to where it was there we are now we do the next one now the stock must always be on the face side so I get comfortable like this and then when I'm ready press down with the with the spurs my pressing with me thumb means that the spurs will then put a line down the wood and this is how you mark all wood you never you never use a rule or something else, you always use a, a marking gauge when you're marking down the length of wood. Okay, so that's all those done. Now what we do, we mark them all up immediately. Now again on this one, this is the one with the mortises, and there's the face side, so the stock goes on the face side like that. And I only need to mark between the lines, in between those lines, and between those lines. Stock on the face side, down there, and down there you'll notice this particular wood even though it's got a big knot the knot is not in the way of the mortise I'll do the same on this one so the face side has the stock on it get comfortable and then when you're ready press with your thumb and mark it okay turn him over the stock on the face side again go down the line and go down the line and that means now we've got all of our wood sorted out except that it's not sorted out on the bench so now what i'm going to do is put them all back to where they were so that one's correct we've got the little triangle there oh these aren't right um so i turn that one around oh that's not right turn it right oh, that's better so now i've got all of my wood back to where i started okay and the thing that we cut out first is going to be the mortises there's another video which explains how to cut mortises out and there's another video again that explains how to do the tenons. I won't do those today. But that's how we mark out wood, and in this particular case, how we mark out a frame.